Hello everybody. Today we're going to play around with a three-step technique for doing vintage roses. Lately I've been really into my flat brushes and my brand new number 10 silver black velvet. It's got a wonderful, wonderful point. I'm sort of addicted to trying different watercolor round brushes. So usually what I do, there's all sorts of great reference on Pinterest. Um, what I do is I pull together photographs, vintage images. Uh, this is kind of a botanical drawing. And then this artist whose work I love, and I can't remember her name, but uh, note it's just a visual reference. So you can actually peek at a rose and see kind of how it works and where the shadows fall, etc. Basic shapes, but then you put it away and you don't you don't copy the layout. You come up with your own layout and just sort of let it let it roll. But it's nice to have something in front of you. Um, there are there are times that I just paint right out of my head, but I, I like to have something to look at. So here we go. I'm not even exactly sure what colors I'm going to be using. <sighs> Puppy hair. Little black lab fur. So I'm going to dig in and, and I'll put the colors in my in my comments, in my notes later. So I'm going to use my pencil. My It's a Faber-Castell Graphite Aquarel. Aqu Aquarel. The beauty of it is the lines disappear. So I'm gonna give myself a rough layout. I, I, I like to use odd numbers. So I'm gonna have a rose kind of pointing up here, a big juicy one pointing right at us here, and then maybe another one here pointing that away. Uh, and I think we'll probably have a few buds, like maybe there's a, a bud, a rosebud coming up here possibly another one coming off here. And that's all, that's all I'm gonna sketch. So I'm gonna load up my brush. I'm gonna start with just what's on my palette and just let my brush dance around. So, ooh, that's pretty. So I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start over here and I'm going to just let the brush do its thing. You can even use a bigger, a bigger flat brush if you want. I'm gonna come in with lots of water. I have a petal drooping down here. Maybe some little indications up here. Let's uh, let's grab a little opera to add some punch. Maybe go grab a little alizarin crimson for some shadowy areas some shadowy areas in here. More water. Don't be afraid. That's why it's called watercolor. Maybe this one comes down a little. I need some more dark. Just dancing around. Let's get some starting to define its shape. I think I'm going to add some pop of red in here. Let's see. Looks like I need some dark. So I'm going to mix some of my violet with my Scarlet Lake. Oh god, that's pretty. Let's bring some of that into the middle. Make it even darker. I'm going to add a little Prussian blue to it. Let's 
some light. And then while I've got a loaded brush, I'm going to start giving an indication of this uh, bud, rosebud up here. Let's add a little discern crimson. I'm probably going to need to wait, let this one dry a little before I do much more to it. So I'm going to start in on, I think I want this, this, oh, I guess that one's going to start right there. This one that's kind of pointing away, pointing upward. I think I'm going to make it, I'm going to add a little bit of orange for some contrast. You can see just how absolutely wet these and luscious these are. Go back to my first pink. to look a little different. Let that dry a little bit. Now this one, I think we're going to bring some yellow into this one. So I'm going to start with a lighter, lighter pink. Grab some yellow. And I don't mind that that got a little bit muddy. Grab a little orange. You can get the best, most organic shapes with this brush. Keep it light, Jenny, keep it light. I'm gonna grab some maples. I think this one might be my favorite. I like how the uh, yellow and the opera are kind of mixing together. Oh, that's so pretty. I made this one point up a little bit more than I expected to, but it's all good. This one's holding back on itself. So this one. These flat brushes are so incredibly versatile. I'm going to add a little bit of detail. Dancing around. Oh, golly. I don't know why I whisper. Like, I don't want the paint to hear me. I think I'm going to mess up if it hears me. Ooh, this one's so yummy. Then I'm gonna grab while I'm letting oh there's a little bloss a little bud right here. What the heck? Don't forget about that. This one's a bigger, bigger bud. Okay. 
this is gonna be yummy. All right, I see I've got some pretty big puddles here. Let's scoop some of that up. And then I like what's happening here. So I'm gonna grab some of this darker. Do echo that right here. Like you've got these little petals folding back upon themselves. And then it's gonna happen over here. Contortion with my hand. Later I'm gonna go back in and darken the centers, but let's let's look at let's look at some oh god, my sap green is all goopy. Got some sap green with some orange to, to make myself some touch a little bit. It's interesting to just twirl your brush and see what happens. Little dog hair. And the formula for these leaves is usually there's there's a trifecta, there's three. Works better this way. And if you find that it's getting a little clunky with your flat brush, you can switch to your round brush. I just, I'm really into the flat brush right now. So this leaf is gonna hide under this part right here. A little bleeding. Let's add some water so we get some very different hues. Maybe this one's coming down. That's a lot of pigment. Dark. I need dirtier, dirtier, much dirtier. I've got those little thorns coming off the sides. And tilt it a little if you want your paint to run down. Boy, things are drying fast. This light's hot. Running, running, running. Let's see. Let's get a really this is dark, so because it's going behind this row, so that's more in the shadow. So with that guy. I gotta tell you, I just added some Payne's Gray. That is the most versatile color.
Again, we're dancing around. Let's see, let's give this guy some love. Seeple. This one's kind of hidden. It's looking good, looking good. big petal going over that. Lots of layering. This one doesn't happen to have three. Can you hear my puppy snoring in the background? <laughs> Cute little puppy snores. Let's see. I need something coming down here. I'm gonna grab some Prussian blue. Make a cooler a cooler green. Nice bleed. Just dabbing some stuff in here. So, this is layer one. I am gonna let that dry and I'll be right back. I'm also gonna remove the dog hair. Be right back. Okay, things are still wet, but for my step two, I'm going to add in some leaves in the background, some branches in the background. Usually, since these leaves are very warm, uh, I'm going to do just loose indications of uh, background. Ooh, I need to make it even a little bit more blue. Oh, pretty. Kind of a blue-gray. That's too colorful. I'm going to dirty it up. I'm going to add just a touch of red to dirty it up. There we go. Nice. Okay. So we've got just some some things happening in the background. Oh, I've got this beautiful, beautiful brush here, my black velvet. And I'm going to I'm going to go a little rounder on these shapes for contrast. I'm just flipping my brush around. Maybe this one interferes right here with this leaf. Get a little bleed. I'm going to leave some of that dry brush because I like it. That's very wet. And I think we've got just uh, maybe there's somebody in here. I'm just using my brush as a stamp. It makes such a pretty shape. We've got somebody coming up through here. This is a little, I think I'm going to grab my flat brush again. Oh, that makes a nice shape. I 
another dog here. God. Let's see. What else do we have? Maybe somebody's coming up and over here. I actually am a switch hitter. I switch hands sometimes. I don't expect everybody to be able to do that. Let's see. What else? Okay, this needs to come down here. And it comes through here. It's a lot fatter than I meant for it to be. balance I think for now it is I think what I would like to do is bring some funky little maybe I'm gonna go to a green that's kind of between the two between the cool and the warm maybe we'll have some little little doodads do it in threes. I wish I would have saved a spot right here for another one of those. But maybe they've got just little tiny buds on them. Maybe in just the tip of the brush. And we can add to this later once it's dry if we wanted to add any color sometimes it's, it's good to stand I actually like to use my whole arm um, and sometimes on these loose paintings it's it's really great to stand and just get a little distance between you and your painting All right, let's let things dry and we'll be ready for stage three, which is the detail. Be right back. Okay, some of the petal, I'm sorry, the leaves are still wet, but I am gonna go back in with detail on the flowers because I believe that they are pretty dry. And first of all, I want to darken some of the centers. Let's get a little bit more red in there. Let's just, well, here's the center. I'm gonna add a little orange to this center. A little warmer. Okay, that flower is still kind of wet, but that's okay. So now, I'm going to do two things. I'm gonna do glaze, which is uh, probably more of a tea consistency on some areas, like that. So you can still see the colors below. side edges as if these petals are coming back upon themselves. Let's grab some beautiful opera.
It's already looking better. Doing it again, whispering to myself. I'm gonna bounce around a little bit. Adding some shape. some glaze definition to these. You have to just turn off your brain and use your gut and then kind of glance back at your reference to see where, where would these shadows actually fall. Um, I'm gonna grab. Adding some little random spots of yellow. Let's see, I need a nice dark pink. See, it's okay. Now let's go a little bit purplier. Define some petals. Maybe add some darker shadows underneath. Like, oh yeah, like right around here. And if something's looking weird, just get your brush wet and sort of lift it or mush it. I'm gonna go back with my this brush and just sort of massage and lift. Lots better. Smooth things out a little bit in some areas. And I'm going to, I'm going to stick with this brush and I need to get some heavier pigment. I don't know how much more I'm gonna do. I kind of, I kind of like it. This is the playtime.
I'm not even looking at my reference now. I'm just going with my gut. And my gut is good. Something needs to happen here. Get a little bleed. Needs a little opera. I'm going to grab my rigger, this little guy, and I'm going to add some detail to the leaves. Add a little veining. And this is purely up to the individual whether or not you want to do this. Some people might prefer to leave it loose. I like to add a little detail <laughs> or, or, or a drop splatter, that's fine. The riggers are so good for the detail work. But they're not good for mixing. So I ran out of my color. Okay. You can always just wiggle your rigor. Turn your paper. I'm gonna just take my finger and mush this area. Finger painting. leaf is kind of folding back on itself. You don't really have to define the, um, the background leaves, but every once in a while I'll just add a little gesture. It makes, it does make a difference. I hope I'm not making you dizzy. And this I'm going to do sort of a, an off-kilter outline because this one looked pretty static. So I'm hoping that by outlining it in kind of a loose way, it'll look a little bit more organic. This one I'm just twirling my brush. Add a little depth here. Flipping it around again. Okay. Need a little bit more over here.
It's rainy and windy outside. The puppy is snoring at my feet. Life is good in my princess shed. The epicenter of creativity. And just so you know, nothing ever turns out like I like I kind of thought it would in my head, ever. And that's the magic of it. You, you never quite know what you get. And no two people, oh, look what I just did with my big hand. I think I just got another highlight, another shadow. I'm gonna mush this one too. I forget what I was saying. Oh, now uh, uh, my whole class can all be painting the same thing and no two paintings will look alike. And that's, I love that. Because everybody's got their own inherent style whether they know it or not. So I'm gonna come in with a few more dark darks in the center of the flowers because everything dries lighter. Do we need any other little? Things are still kind of wet, Jenny. Be careful. Yeah, I don't think I want that much detail on this one. That little pop of more of a purpley pink is kind of nice. I do like that. I think that makes a difference. If anything, just some awesome contrast. Are we good? Don't overwork it, Jenny, stop. Oh, something's weird in here. Grab that rigger again. Let's just give, give this guy a little outline. Oh, turn. So I think the last thing I'm gonna do is grab some of my leftover reddish pink and just uh, add some little buds. Little doodads. Now I'm just being silly. Okay. There we have it. Thank you.